Hola, ¿qué tal? Muy buenas noches, excelente arranque de semana, estamos listos con la información del tiempo. Aquí en Monterrey la temperatura también subió, llegamos a los 30 grados, la mínima temprano en 22 y ahora hay 25 y 22, la mínima contrario. Monterrey is the largest industrial city in Mexico, the most important. It stands out as having world-class companies, and uh, one of those outstanding companies is Freezer. Freezer has always been um, one of the great examples to follow in the area. They turned in 40 years in the leading organization in, in Mexico. It's a newer company that has been growing at a much faster rate that, than many others. Frisa parece que hace las cosas al revés. Pone a la persona arriba y el número detrás. And the growth they have achieved, it's impressive, okay? And you cannot argue with success. Mi nombre es Rodolfo Rivera. Para mí, lo más importante es hacer lo que te gusta. Mis sueños, pues uno de ellos es realizarme profesionalmente. Y en lo familiar, ya estoy a un paso de, de, de casarme y después formar una, una bonita familia. Camino al trabajo, me gusta poner atención a, a las vistas que hay y como que sí he hecho un poquito a, a volar la, la imaginación. Mi nombre es Aurelio Castañeda. Soy padre de, de tres hijos. En mi vida, pues yo creo que lo más importante es mi familia. Siento que son el, el fruto del esfuerzo que hace uno como, como padre. Sí, ver que están bien y, y contentos, yo creo que esa es una satisfacción grande para mí. Si me preguntas por qué trabajo en Frisa, gran parte del por qué es la forma en que se trabaja. Lo que hago no nada más lo hago porque es un trabajo y me pagan por ello, o sea, me gusta lo que hago. Porque el ambiente que se siente dentro de la planta es relajante, o sea, relajante en cuestión de que te dejan trabajar tranquilo. Here we trust people of the bat. And I think that actually creates, you know, an atmosphere where people feel trusted and then they actually, you know, behave in a way to deserve their trust. I have always thought that the people is the most important asset to our company and to any other company. And I always have tried the people who work in the company to feel that Frisa is also their company. So we share uh, risks, we share profits, And sometimes we have always shared bad times. We at Frisa were working together to make forgings, built to order, from 50 pounds in weight all the way to 50,000 pounds, to industries varying from aerospace, mining, oil and gas, power generation. You would see our rings inside power generation uh, turbines. You would see them inside our jet engine, in the bearings of the big wind, wind towers. It's a product that you don't see and realize it's there, but it's always a critical product in every single piece of heavy machinery in the world.
I started Frisa when I was 22 years old with three workers and myself. What I wanted to do was to have a Mexican company to supply in Mexico. With the years and with the situation, the Mexican situation in the 80s. The Mexico City stock market has lost more of its value than any exchange in the world. Tonight, compared to the dollar, the peso is worth only half of what it was just yesterday. At that time, we had no money. At that time, we had no experience. Mexico was basically dead in terms of uh, forging consumptions. So I realized that if I wanted to keep growing, I had to change. I mean. We were exporting 75, 80% of our sales. And the demands were very high uh, in terms of technical requirements, instead of uh, performance. I started to, to feel that my experience and my knowledge was not enough. Eduardo Sr. was building the new facility, have a lot of debt. There were a lot of problems. And I realized that I needed some help. Somebody recommended Aurelio. And that's when I knew the uh, Adesis methodology. He was working with Ishak Adesis, and he came to Monterey. He gave me the book, the life cycle book, at that time, and when I read it, I just liked it. The Adesis methodology, you introduce the concepts of teamwork, the common goal, the, program does it. the alignment. I thought that that was a perfect fit for me. So I hired Aurelio. Aurelio Flores. Pues trajo una manera diferente de trabajar. So it was a three-day uh, diagnostic. Tenía que estar personas de la compañía the representante de los diferentes niveles. Taking people from all of the areas of the organization into a syndic obviously will bring some problems to the surface. Aurelio was uh, the moderator. Nos sacaba cosas interesantes, ¿verdad? Que, que vivíamos con ellas, pero no nos dábamos cuenta. Y empezaba a agrupar. O sea, decía, bueno, este problema se parece mucho a este problema y a este y a este. O sea, este es uno solo, lo juntamos. At the end of the uh, three days diagnosis, the conclusion is, well, Frisa looks like a plane that is going this way. It eventually, it's going to crash. I left that room feeling that I was ready to start uh, a wild ride. So I like it. One thing is to know what you are lacking. One thing is to know that there is a, a possibility, there is a way that you can overcome all these uh, obstacles. Okay, we have problems, we identify them, we're working on them. But now, where do we want to go? Organizations that adopt that this is methodology have a paradigm shift in how they practice management of organizations. En la metodología, en la cultura, primero hay que definir qué es lo que vamos a hacer y entonces sí, ahora sí, reestructurar. When you get into this, the whole organizational structure changes. A veces nuestra magente es reacomodarnos. And there was some people who did not believe in the methodology. Pues era muy extraño, era muy raro. La primera decíamos, no hombre, no sabe, pues cómo. Se puede ser, pues, complicado, burocrático. So the courage comes when you have to, you know, put aside the people who don't want, don't believe, who don't want to do it. And at that time, I guess, the courage came from, from Eduardo Senior. I had the, the ideas, but how to put it uh, to work it was difficult. That's why when I knew the Adesis methodology, I learned how to do it better through processes, not only through feelings, so the methodology gave me methodology to do it, to implement it. The changes started to bring Frisa better results in terms of quality, in terms of on-time delivery. With this methodology, for the first time, we developed a consistent 
way to approach the problems. It required a lot of coordination, a lot of talking between each other, and I guess it was the beginning of the participative movement that Aurelio brought uh, with, with the uh, this is methodology. We teach organizations how to enable the information to flow from the bottom up so leaders can make better decisions based on real information that's going on and because it's made participatively, implementation of change is easier. The key is that you get the involvement of everybody and you make decisions together. If you involve more people in the decision, more people is going to be with you. It seems to be very slow when you're making decisions, but since decisions are so sound, then when you implement it's really easy. Una vez que se llega a un acuerdo, viene la implementación y ahí sí ya no se discute nada. Because everybody understands why we are making those decisions and why it needs to be done. Y es muy rápido porque la gente ya está convencida de por qué sí. Entonces fluye y fluye y fluye. People, when they feel they have a voice, they get involved. And when they get involved, they start, you know, finding solutions and giving ideas and, and, and really committing to the company. Uh, and not just coming in, working, getting paid and, and going home. are 1,700 direct people who work with the company. We, we sell to about 30 different countries. You can really see their success in their people. I want to explain to you how my wife explained to me how is it to work in Frisa. Every morning, you will wake up as a kid going to kindergarten, and you're always happy, and you will always wear your Frisa t-shirts. By the way, she has prohibited me to buy more Frisa clothes. She said, I have enough. <laughs> Frisa is a company that is growing at 30% growth rate every year. And the people work only the hours they need to work. They don't work more than, than is needed. The better the company cares for the employee, the better the employee will care for the company. Now, you can see that from the locker room and the job place to their benefits and their career opportunity. I think it's very important for the people to know how the company is doing. So, even that Frisa is a private company, we share our numbers with 100% of the people. Un mes nos hicieron una una fiesta, un convivio porque facturamos 500 mil dólares. Y ahorita 500 mil dólares los facturamos en una hora. Frisa is growing a lot. When you grow a lot, you have a lot of problems. In 2008, after the crisis, you know, I was, I was being been down tough by my father. Uh, things were not good, numbers were not good. He was in charge of free aerospace, and we were struggling. He, you know, started telling me, look, I think, you know, things could be done better, etc. And in many ways, and I asked him, I, I asked him, father, I'm sure, with your experience, you probably felt what I'm feeling now in the past, and tell me what you did. So I, I told him, Eduardo, uh, I remember 20 years ago when I had these sort of problems, I brought Aurelio and he helped me a lot. So after that conversation, we both kind of thought, well, maybe this is a good time to, to go back to Adesis. And uh, somehow got connected to Sunil. Sunil came. We found that the common language was there because we have been working with uh, you know, Adesis methodology since 91 or earlier. The first meeting was a little bit of trepidation and then uh, everything's going to be all right and uh, let's go have some fun and, and, and then we, we do the Syndac. You know, Sunil uh, tells you, you know, you have to bring people that are going to say no. Un evento Sindag es como invitar a alguien a una discusión familiar. Everyone has a different opinion and all were interacting. ¿Qué voy a decir? Este, un chorro de jefes. I think we finished the day, we put all the problems on the walls. And, I don't know, 500 plus problems, so... So you, you face all these problems and you believe, that's it, this, this company is going to go bankrupt. You have this and this and this and this and this. And at the end, that evening, I really felt all the problems were mine. The first night is a nightmare. I mean, you feel like, like if you have a terminal disease. And I think that was the first time I really felt the, 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 you know, the, the methodology. The first day is a tough day because you're 
cleansing this thing and you think all oh, these issues are like your responsibility and your fault or whatever and how can this happen to me? And, and my father told me, you know, the first day is going to be tough. You're not going to sleep well, but don't worry about it. The second day things get better. Because as we say in Adesis, it's not about the problems. The problems are going to be there forever. But that's part of life. You're only as big as the problems you can solve. So little people, little problems, big people, big problems. So the 534 problems didn't scare them because it's okay, good, give me a challenge. Because if the PA system is working, let's make sure the PA system does its job. And then the following day, everybody starts, you know, focusing on what's important. And you start realizing how that's the moment where you feel the problems are, gonna, are spread out. By putting the problems on the table, you, you, are, you do not personalize the problem. <laughs> For the first time, everybody is there, everybody sees him. And we all are going to take this terminal disease and we are going to try to solve it little by little, piece by piece, and this is the methodology. We don't fix the, the biggest fish, even if it's more important than some of the EIs, I know. And it's incredible, it's just to what that one thing, things change, then you go back to work the next week and it seems like everybody's carrying the load. But what happened next was more important because at the Syndag there was some confusion about who really was in running the show. Was it the father or the son? Even the, the Lalo had the aerospace division, but there were a number of decisions impacted by how the Eduardo Senior was thinking. It was not easy at the very beginning to convince Eduardo to use a thesis methodology. For him, I think it was a very important way to develop my capabilities. And what has impressed me is that since the first time, he also liked it right away. I mean, like me. My father has been, a, you know, an incredible entrepreneur. Uh, and a lot of people think, well, it's it's because of, the, of his vision that I think has happened. I think it's the case, but it's not necessarily the case in the decisions that that Frisa has made. Nobody better than him knows and has lived with the values and the culture that I believe. So now it's time to pass the next steps to my son. So now it's his turn. So now his vision. We're at the beginning of, of, of interesting times uh, of big growth. Probably we're, we're going to have to go global. We're going to have to learn how to get you know people from different cultures involved. So the challenge is how do we actually you know, grow this cycle without losing the essence of, 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 of what free science and what we, we, we've been able to do now. I think FRISA is unique because it understands the connection between values and performance and why that's so critical. One way that, that this methodology helps us for growth is, you know, I, I really like that word by, by, by Isha Kadis, is, which is democracy. Which is, you know, if, if you're able to have democratic decision making and then autocratic implementation, I think is what, what makes us find opportunities for growth. Usually, if you have too much flexibility, you lose control. And if you have too much control, you lose flexibility, which is necessary for innovation and entrepreneurship. So the question is what to do? How do you get both these things coexisting because one undermines the other? How do you balance between the execution and administrative, you know, part and the, the entrepreneurial, creative and, and integrative part of the company? We resolved it by creating parallel structures. Top-down hierarchy, typical command and control for implementation, dictatorial, and a bottom-up structure which is openness, discussion, flexibility, democracy. In FRISA, what we, what we have is an official way or channel yeah. to, to have the people that are on the floor, besides the machines, to communicate their concerns all the way up, up to the executive committee. That's through the POX. POX, which stands for Participative Organizational Councils where discussion takes place, what to do, how to do, independently of the organizational hierarchy. And together with Cine teams work together synergistically to solve problems. Whenever they have a problem in which they don't have the authority to solve, they go through the POCs 
all the way up to the executive committee. By doing it in the, the POC structure and cascading it down, it allows you to decentralize that without losing control or delegate without losing control. These guys are sort of like ambassadors. They come here to these meetings, talk about their concerns, listen to their boss's concerns. It's a very different to get orders and do stuff and maybe not be happy about it to obviously participate in forums like the POCs or the senior teams. And Alguien debería de, de revisar por, si ya están las herramientas para que ellos puedan trabajar. Te hace sentir cómodo y se rompe el hielo y puedes o, hablar un poquito más y ofrecer lo que tú sabes. ¿verdad? In that way, the CEO and that executive committee can harness the knowledge that these guys at the floor really have. And I think in Frisa, and the more we grow, the more so. It's about getting the people involved, about getting the ideas involved, about getting people to tell us the problems that they're seeing. But once a decision is being made, taken, there is no more discussion. We go into implementation, everybody gets behind it, and we do it. I think it's about democracy. <laughs> if, if, if we're able to, to, man, to, to really live that, I think growth happens. Alex turned into a hurricane late on Tuesday evening, right around 11 p.m. Eastern time. As Alex continues to head toward the coast of Mexico, you can see those rain En esta planta lo que pasó es que se inundó. Tenemos equipos que tienen fosas eh, dos metros hacia abajo. Cuando llegué, la planta tenía, eh, no sé, 50 centímetros de, de lodo. There was mud, there was garbage, there was, you know, everything was a disaster. No sabíamos qué iba a pasar, o sea, de ver la planta, yo decía, irá a volver a jalar, o sea, uh, we just happened to be in the, in the wrong side of the river, right? So there was a, the river's coming in and there's a, a, a canal. And I remember walking in. Looking back, I guess it wasn't so different as a family fixing the house. Había compañeros que ya tenían palas y carretillas y botes y la misma gente que que elaboramos aquí, incluso familiares, se unieron a a apoyar. No había jefes. No había ayudantes, o sea, todos éramos trabajadores. Absolutely no hierarchy, absolutely no uh, authority from, from, you know, literally everybody was a team, everybody was working to basically save the company. Y pues echarle, va, ya al paso de las... Veíamos un... que nos íbamos a tardar a lo mejor unos dos meses. No, me entre semanas. I think if we didn't have that, you know, culture in the company, uh, it would have taken a lot more. And I guess maybe it would have been management's problem. And here it was clear, it was everybody's problem. The methodology creates kind of a belief system in a mutual trust and respect. At the end of the day, one of the core overarching values is the value of mutual trust and respect. And why mutual trust and respect? What's the purpose of mutual trust and respect? Mutual respect means we recognize each other's right to think differently. No sé, es muy natural ver un operador de una línea argumentando con su jefe sin pensar estoy hablando con con una autoridad o estoy simplemente es algo natural, es algo que no pensamos. Mutual trust exists when there is common interest at least in the long run. I trust people that have my interest at heart. And they trust me because I have their interest at my heart. We might disagree, 
and learn from each other this agreement, which is mutual respect. But there is one agreement which is a common, and it is we have common interest that we share. While it sounds like a religious kind of term, it's a very operational kind of thing because it helps you figure out how to play the, the game right, position the people in the right places, and how to pass the ball well. So when they move to a new game or a new position, they are able to do that with much greater speed because they don't hang up about, okay, I need to go to a new position now and, and let's make it happen. I have been in like four or five dif different positions. I joined in, this, in the commercial group. I started uh, as a quality assurance manager. I'm currently the business unit manager. And different positions is different decisions and different people. Y a veces no lo escoges, pero pues es por el beneficio de, de los que, del crecimiento de Frisa. A culture of mutual trust and respect means that the organization is flexible, adaptable to change, and workers do not mind to change positions. De Frisa lo que me gusta es que siempre está cambiando y siempre es diferente. We are used to live with the change. And as it is flexible and changing and having control, the organization is more successful in competing, and more successful in growing in a sustainable way. This is a group that can reinvent itself very quickly. And that, that creates this environment of change which is, which is, which is incredible. And, and I think at the end, not only does a company grow, but the, we all grow. ¿Cómo se portaron hoy? Bien. Está la tarea, mi amor. Sí. Toda o nomás una. Toda. ¿Eh? ¿Y qué te sacas en la escuela? Diez. Ah. ¿Y dónde está? Piensa en la libreta. The real reason to build a company is to build also a social system. Ver a, a mis hijos desarrollados como, como profesionistas. Ese es el, el sueño mío. El compañerismo, el ambiente, son libertades que tenemos en Frisa y eso pues te, te hace sentir profesionalmente eh, desarrollado. Frisa es una perfecta combinación de arte y ciencia. La ciencia es la metodología y el arte es el poder escuchar y el poder poner a la persona enfrente del motor de la organización. The methodology is about really working on the most important thing you know any organization can, can, can work on, which is the people and the way we connect. It's a systematic methodology to go harness that power of your culture and make it your true competitive advantage. Because today they're making forged rings, tomorrow they're not making forged rings, they're going to be in the steel business. So it's, it's not about what you do, it's about who you are. In Frisa, we have something called Producto con Ángel. What Frisa sells is something that they cannot touch. It's something that they don't know what it is, but they like it. They say, well, there's something about the atmosphere here. People are smiling. There's no much hierarchy. And people, I think, naturally like that. It's a mix of things. You don't know why, but you feel it, I mean. <laughs>